Hi everyone and welcome to Tuesday's Tips with Kimber Bell. My name is Laurie and today we're going to talk about pinwheels. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted to give people a minute to get on and just say a shout out hi to those that are on. So if you're uh, from different places, please let us know. We love hearing where you're from. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, and I did mention this in a different video, but I did want to mention again, it's so important to have the right tools. And so before we begin, make sure that you have gathered your correct needle. I love these needles. Um, I think I mentioned this last time. I love the gold tops to that needle. Um, it makes it easier for me to be able to thread. And I do like when I'm adding embellishments to use a floss. So some type of floss, either one or two strands of floss. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to be using today. Today we're talking about pinwheels. And on the quilt, there's several different pinwheels. This is the embroidery version of the quilt and there is a pinwheel right here. Um, there are several others over here as well as um, pinwheel, oh there it is, down there. So these pinwheels, this is like I said the embroidery version. Now the sewing version we have right next to us. The sewing version also has pinwheels on it. And today I'm going to show you just some tips and it's for both whether you're making the sewing version or the embroidery version of the pinwheels. This is going to be the exact same technique you're going to use for both. All right, so once you've made your pinwheel, um, it'll look something like these. Okay, so it'll look something like these pinwheels are right here. Now the pinwheels themselves, um, I'm just going to show it with the sewing version, but if you had the um, embroidery version, you would simply have satin stitch running uh, around these. Um, the sewing version, as you can see, it has got a stitching. Now, if you wanted to with the sewing version, and this is really cute, if you take pinking shears and you have a p little bit of a pinking edge to it, you can leave it straight, you can do a pinking edge, you can do a, a curved edge if you get one of those rotary cutters that also does a curved edge. So what I want to show you is a tip uh, on how to place these because sometimes it gets confusing. So I'm going to place these on the table here because that's a little bit easier for me to write on. But what I like to do is I take, um, you can take a water soluble or um, an iron off, whatever you want, and I mark every other corner. And I'm going to mark one with A, then I'm going to rotate B and make sure it's the same corner each time, C and D. And I'm going to show you exactly what I've done here. So here's A, right here is A, then I rotated it and on that same side I wrote B and I rotated it, same side I wrote C and I rotated it, same thing with D. Now I know if I just go in order of attaching A down, then B down, then C down, it's going to turn into my pinwheel. Alright, so now I already have a thread ready with a needle, uh, or excuse me, with thread, a needle and thread ready. Can't talk. So what I like to do is I come up from the bottom of my pinwheel, and I'm, I'm doing this so that my red is facing, um, my red's the one that I'm going to curl down. Alright, and the first thing I do is I put my uh, thread right through the middle, okay, and this is true for both embroidery or sewing, okay. The next thing I do is I'm going to grab A and I just grab it really close to the corner and then you simply pull A on to your pinwheel like that. And then if you want you can tack it down or you can just continue adding your B, your C, your D. So it it's depends on which is easiest for you. There's one. Now I'm going to put my B down and I'm going to catch my B. Now the reason I want you to have these nice solid needles is because you're starting to get through how many layers, right? A lot of layers. So I'm going to place my, um, I'm going to go through C next and I'm actually going to pull C down on top of B and I'm going to tack that in place. And like I say, you're getting through more and more layers. So make sure that you have a nice good solid needle. I would not recommend a darning needle. That's a little too much. Now we've got D, right? 
And so once I've got D down, I already have my needle and thread, and I simply, oh, sorry, I have my needle and thread, and then I simply pick up my um, button, and I just let it fall right down the string, and I've already got it right there. And I'm using black thread so you can actually see the black thread against the white. That's why I used black thread, but normally I would have used white. And then, as you can see, I already have my pinwheel in place with my button already on there. And I just tie a knot now on the back of this, and I only have to do it one time because this is doubled floss. So this is two strands of floss, which makes it plenty strong to hold all of that together, including the button. Now I simply go to my project, and I've already got my needle ready. I've tied a knot on the back of this to hold it, and I just whip stitch it right on. So it's that simple. Um, I, I know a lot of people are like, if I glue it, then the glue comes out the buttonholes, and then I can't see um, the thread, or it doesn't look good, or it doesn't look right because I want to see um, thread going through my button. This is how I like to do it. Now, you can do it any how you'd like, but that's how I recommend. Um, do we have any questions about pinwheels? No questions. No questions. All right. Um, one thing I do want to mention is this, I just I just love the pinwheel. If you wanted to make your pinwheel stick out a little more from your quilt, um, for example, I'm going to pull this over here right next to me. Um, so this has got the pinwheel right here. And it's, it's pretty flat because this is a table runner, so I don't want it to, to pop out as much. If you wanted it to pop out a little more from your quilt, all you simply do is you can add a couple of extra buttons on the back side of this, which will push it away from your quilt, which would make it look like it's more suspended in the air, like you can actually spin it or something. Um, so all you have to do is add a couple of buttons on the back side for some depth and it will push it away from your quilt just a little bit. Um, thank you so much for joining. If you do think of any questions after we've already, um, even if, if the um, film is over, the video, you can still comment on the video and Maddie is happy to answer all your questions. So if you think of something later, don't worry, don't hesitate, go ahead and type in that question. We would love to help you out. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bye-bye.